Dr. Harshfield, if you could come on and explain this other hormone response in, in metabolism, I think that would be very, very valuable for us right now. This almost got me kicked out of med school right here. Um, if only they knew. <laughs> fetal, among other things. Exactly. Uh, fetal pancreas transplantation. Now, in 1977, I, I think I was five years old, uh, <laughs> we, started, we started doing this work. And what we were looking at was Wistar rats. These are beautiful white laboratory rats. And we can make them diabetic. And maybe the way to look at this, when we talk about metabolism, that's what this whole uh, group really discusses day to day, day in, day out. Metabolism is just the flow of energy throughout the body. And we've talked about amino acids and proteins in the past. We've talked about fats. And now we're going to talk about carbohydrates, specifically glucose. And then how glucose is handled by the body is very unique. And there are two hormones primarily that control what glucose does. The insulin we all know about and have talked about, it's very important we understand the level of that hormone. And what insulin does when it's released, when we eat a candy bar, is it decides, is that glucose molecule going to go directly in the cell and be used to make ATP, to make energy? Or is that glucose, we don't really need it right now. We're going to go to the liver and we're going to store that for later. So we only have to eat three times a day. So insulin determines glucose is going to be burned as fuel or it's going to be stored as glycogen in the liver. Now, we've eaten and it's been three or four hours and our blood sugar starts to drop. We have another hormone called glucagon. It is also released in those islet cells in the pancreas. The pancreas is a very unique organ. It's really the abdominal salivary gland, if you think about that, and that it releases an exocrine or a, a sort of a, a, a solution that dissolves uh, light fat and helps to uh, make uh, the pH higher in the duodenum so you can break down sugars and so forth. So as soon as you eat the candy bar, the pancreas releases the exocrine amylase to break down the, the big complex carbs into glucose and start absorbing them. But there's also an endocrine function in that same little tongue-shaped gland, the pancreas. And within those islets, it's named after Professor Langerhans, within those islets live different kinds of cells. The alpha cells release insulin. The beta cells, excuse me, the beta cells release insulin. The alpha cells release glucagon. And guess what else? There are delta cells, and it releases somatostatin. Not exactly like statins for cholesterol, but that functions to stop things. So you have all three of these cells talking together to control glucose from minute to minute throughout the body. Once we become diabetic, we lose that function. In type 1 diabetics, they have glucose that's no longer pushed in the cell by the insulin. Those are called diabetics. Um, the type 2 diabetics, there's glucose out there, but the receptor, the, the body's cells are not able to take the glucose up as type 2 diabetes. Now what, what Billy's talking about is we've missed the boat. We're monitoring sugar levels when, in fact, it'd be like monitoring oxygen levels for people who have vascular problems. You got to have oxygen and you got to have sugar. The problem is the hormones that control where those things go, insulin is the culprit in diabetes, but guess what? Glucagon, its little partner, is elevated. And what insulin does is drop blood sugar down. It puts it away or burns it. What glucagon does is release sugar into the bloodstream. Insulin, low levels of insulin result in glucagon being high. You really, it's not a hypo low insulin level so much as a hyper glucagon emia. So now we're recognizing you got low insulin, high glucagon. There's, there's your problem. And it is so intricate and difficult to correct. And we try giving shots, but then those are one shot in the morning and one in the afternoon. You've still got every 
hour in between where the glucose is going different levels. We've done insulin release uh, uh, compartment, uh, bury them under the skin and it releases insulin over the day, but still it's a constant level. There's really no way to do it better than the way God intended. And that's for these little cells to read the blood as it comes back from the gut, figure out what you ate, how much sugar is in it and release insulin and glucagon to make that glucose level normalized. In this, ex in this experiment, when I was in medical school, in the honors program, we took rats and made them diabetic. And then we took fetal rats, took rats and got them pregnant. And at day 12, they have a 21 day gestational cycle. At day 12, the little embryonic rats, if you take the pancreas out of it, it's just mature enough at day 12 to be functional pancreas, but it's not mature enough to create a, a, a reaction that it's a, a non-self. And we would take that pancreatic tissue from the embryonic uh, rats and put it under the kidney capsule of the diabetic rats, and it would vascularize within 24 hours. And all the, think of how much blood flow goes through your kidneys. We essentially transplanted pancreatic tissue into the kidney of a diabetic rat. Within a month, their glucose levels were normal. We thought we'd cure diabetes. We almost got kicked out of med school. They're right. You can't be playing around with embryonic stem cells, but this was a long time ago. This was not human. This is in rats, but still, we don't need embryonic. We say stem cells, we're using adult stem cells. We're not doing embryonic stuff. This was the very beginning of this research. We figured out how to do it. This, I'm surprised it hasn't been done since then. There are ways of using our own stem cells and, and reprogramming it, them to become pancreatic-like. I think that's where the next step is. So insulin's extremely important, but it's got a little brother called glucagon, and they play back and forth. And... The reason it's so hard to, to fix diabetes is it's such an orchestra, such a, a conversation that you really can't do it with shots or even pumps. You really need it to be able to monitor minute to minute what the sugar level is and to take care of it. Somatostatin is this hormone that it also inhibits secretion of insulin and glucagon and everything else, growth hormone. And that's where the idea to take these statins for cholesterol came from. That's a, a different kind of statin. It acts in the liver to keep you from making fat, uh, low density lipoproteins. But the somatostatin lives in the islet cell. So the pancreas is the abdominal salivary gland, but it's a really smart little organ. Um, and, oh, there we go, Thomas. That's probably enough. <laughs>